want to say a few things about Ramadan because we don't want to just come and uh, encourage you to give but without sharing something. So uh, we mentioned earlier after Maghrib we would discuss the ha- hadith of Abi Hurairah radiallahu an that he relates from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But we'll mention the hadith but discuss something else very briefly. Because the hadith has many points and we couldn't get all of them. So an Abi Hurairah radiallahu an qaad قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كل عمل ابن آدم له الحسنات بعشر أمثالها إلى السبعين من الدين وقال الله عز وجل إلا الصيام فإنه لي وأنا أجزي بي ترك شهوته وتعامه وشرابه من أجلي للصائم فرحتان فرحة عند فكره وفرحة عند لقاء ربه ولا خلوف فهم الصائم أطيب عند الله مريه الميت so this hadith, which is mentioned in the compilations of both Imam al-Bukhari and Muslim and others, that Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, says that the Messenger of Allah, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, all of the action the human being does, the reward of that is for him or her, whatever the case may be. And good deeds are multiplied ten times up to 700 times and similar uh, wordings mentioned in many times over and beyond the 700 even and then Allah says may he be mighty and majestic except fasting that is mine I will reward the servant for that so fasting is exempted from the deeds that are multiplied fasting is also exempted from the deeds whose reward accrues directly to the servant. And fasting, based on another version of the hadith mentioned in the Musnad of Imam Ahmed, كُلْ عَمْنِ بْنِ آدَمَ كَفَّارَةٌ لَهُ إِلَّا الصَّوْمَ فَالصَّوْمُ لِي وَأَنْعِزِّي All of the actions of the human being are an atonement, a source of atonement or expiation for them. Except fasting, that is mine, I will reward them with that. So fasting is exempted from the deeds that are in the atonement of kafara. So in other words, it's mentioned by Sufyan bin Uyayna, Yawm al-Qiyamah, when the people we have wronged come and take from our hasanat. Some people, all of their hasanat will be gone. All of the rewards of their good deed, the reward of their prayer, the Qur'an, their zakah, their hajj, the Qur'an, the awrad, adhkar, everything will be gone. At that point, if they still owe people who they've wronged, Allah will recompense those people directly and then return to the servant the reward from their fasting because no one could take that. It wasn't a a kafara, nor did it belong to the servant. إِلَّا الصِّيَامِ إِلَّا الصَّوْمِ فَالصَّوْمُ لِي And on the basis of the reward of their fast alone, they'll be entered into paradise. And then he said he's left his carnal appetites, his food and drink for my sake. So Ramadan we leave the lawful for the sake of Allah only. Not because it's haram. The milk you don't drink, the juice you don't drink, the water you don't drink, the vegetables, the fruits, the rice, the potatoes you don't eat in the day in Ramadan are halal. They're lawful. So we don't leave them because they're haram. We don't leave them because they're from the khaba'if from the vile and filthy things, we leave them for the sake of Allah alone. So if we leave lawful, good and pure things for the sake of Allah, how much easier does it become to leave things that are haram, forbidden and filthy? This is the, how we inculcate taqwa. لَعَلَكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامِ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So he's left all that for my sake. لِسَائِمِ فَرْحَةً فَرْحَةٌ عِنْدَ فِطْرِهِ وَفَرْحَةٌ عِنْدَ لَقَاءِ رَبِّهِ The faster will have two delights, the delight when they break their fast, and we discussed this earlier in another venue, and the delight when they meet their Lord. And what a, what a great, great joy when we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لَا إِلَّا الله Incomparable. And then he says the foul odor that emanates from the mouth of the fasting pe- uh, person sometimes 
and some people, not everyone and not all times, is sweeter with Allah than the fragrance of musk. In other words, the things that we, uh, the consequence of our obedience to Allah, if they sometimes are displeasing to people, we should know they're pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if the odor from fasting at the end of the day, towards the end of the day, sometimes it offends people, is sweet with Allah and beloved to Allah. May this sister, the hijab offends people. Sister, know that it's beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should, we should look to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek the pleasure of Allah. I want to mention very quickly, because the time is probably up, Ibrahim al nakhai one of the great early Muslims, one of the teachers of Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimahum Allah, may Allah be, have mercy on both of them. He said, Halaka man haluku qablakum li thalati khisal fudul al ta'am wa fudul al kalam wa fudul al manam. That the people who are ruined before you were ruined because of three characteristics too much eating, too much talking, and too much sleeping. So Ramadan cuts down on all three. We eat less because we're fasting and the days are very long. At least we should eat less. Some people make up after it's tough. <laughs> but even those people at the end of the month because the stomach shrinks, they'll, they'll, they'll even eat less. And we talk less because number one, we're mindful of our words. Because if we don't leave off foul and indecent speech, Allah has no need that we leave off our food and drink. And we're also, we're too tired to talk towards the end of the day. We become very judicious and parsimonious in our speech. And we sleep less, as you all know. The tarawih is over at 12.30, maybe 1 o'clock. We get home, it's 1.30. We have uh, suhoor at 3 o'clock, quarter to 4. 4 o'clock, so we have to get up for that. And that's from the sunan of the fast we shouldn't abandon. So we shouldn't say, you know, I'll eat a big iftar and I'll wake up 10 minutes before Fajr goes out at 10 minutes to 6 or whatever the time is here in Dallas. No, we should get up. This is from the sunan. So we sleep less. Some people go from there, they come to Fajr, the masjid, they leave the masjid and they go to work. And Allah suffices them. Uh, the point is, these are the things that build us up as human beings. Because we're not feeding our carnal appetites, we're feeding our souls. These are the staples of the soul food diet. Not the physical soul food diet, collard greens and cornbread and that kind of soul food. But food for the soul, food for the ruh, which is the three things he mentioned, sleeping less, saha, eating less, jua, hunger, talking less, samt. And then the fourth, uzla. These are the four staples of the soul food diet, and the people who make itikaf, they get that. So all four of these staples of the soul food diet, they come to us in Ramadan. So we should feed our souls, and we should feed that aspect of our being that's not immediately physically tangible. And we'll stop here after this point because I think it's a very important point that our materialistic culture and society pushes us away even if we say we believe in the ghayb, it pushes us away from the reality of the ghayb, of the unseen rule, world. It pushes us away from that. And our strength as a believer and as a human being, as a unique and distinct creature, creation of Allah, is rooted in our connection to the ghayb. This is the first description of the believer in the Qur'an. The Fatiha is praise of Allah and mentioning of some of Allah Ta'ala's attributes. And then it's a prayer, a dua. إِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Guide us to the straight path. And then we go into, and then there's a description of that path. Surat al and alayhim. Then we come to Surah Baqarah. Surah Baqarah starts, It mentions the people of Taqwa, then it describes them. 
This is the first description of the believer in the Quran. الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ Those who believe in the unseen. So we should feed our souls so that we can stay connected to the unseen world. And this is our strength as believers. Many Muslims in these universities, they're leaving Islam. And one reason they're leaving Islam because there's no connection to the ghayb. Everything is material. And they take the material methods and the material epistemology approaches to knowledge to use to analyze and affirm the reality of those things in the unseen world. It doesn't work like that. As soon as one accepts those premises, it's, one already has one foot in kufr because there's no foundation and no basis for accepting the unseen. And so we should be very careful and, and we should look at the comprehensiveness of who we are as a human being. We're more than just molecules and atoms and material. We're spirit, we're ruh. And we should cultivate that aspect of our being and Ramadan is the best thing to do that. Allah yubarik fikum wa taqabbal minkum wa zarkum Allah fi khulli khair kulli khair please uh, support the initiative we have a table out there and on the sister side jazakallah khair assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah tonight tara we are within the 1:30 because of me <laughs>